Good morning. It's really my pleasure to have a chance to tell you about an advanced clinical project uh, where we're currently using a plasma DNA product instead of a viral vector DNA product. This is the required disclosure statement. Uh, it's too small to read, but if anybody wants a copy, I'll be happy to give you a copy of the slides later on. So HelixMyth is a company that is focused on gene therapy. Uh, it is a company, you know, I'm having trouble reading the slide from here. It's too bad, maybe I, I'll come around this way. Um, we're developing a pipeline of novel gene therapy products uh, and we're currently in phase two or phase three clinical trials with several products. Uh, our primary study location is in the United States. We also are doing some clinical trials in Korea, which is where the company was started. Our most advanced product is called Ingensis, or VM202, and that is currently in phase three for painful diabetic peripheral neuropathy. And one of the important things about it is that it already has received an RMAT designation, which is Regenerative Medicine Advanced Therapy designation from the US FDA. It's one of very few, uh, in fact, only two ma major disease uh, products that have received an RMAT designation to date. The company has been in Korea, uh, founded in Seoul, Korea, uh, and on the NASDAQ, or the, the COSDAQ exchange, which is the equivalent of NASDAQ, since 2006. Its headquarters is in Seoul, but we also have major facilities in San Diego and all of our clinical team, most of our clinical team, are located here in the United States. We do gene therapy manufacturing in addition to uh, clinical trials for gene therapy. We set up a, a, a CDMO plant in San Diego called Genopus uh, several years ago. Uh, we built this out of an existing plant that was designed to build plasma DNA products, and we spun this off to a German biotech uh, CDMO uh, in uh, the, the last part of last year. But we are using this plant to manufacture commercial grade uh, product for our phase three program and we'll be using that in future clinical trials. It'll be our commercial source for, uh, for eventual approval by the FDA. In addition to this, we have set up a manufacturing plant at our facility in Seoul where we can do customized products uh, for uh, either viral vector or for plasma DNA manufacturing. Plasma DNA is our main focus to date. It's our most advanced program to date, but we do have AAV-related products, and we have CAR-T-related products. Uh, and the fourth angle that we're working on is a uh, monoclonal antibody product that has agonist activity instead of antagonist activity at the C-MET receptor, which is the receptor that we're using for our studies uh, in a painful diabetic peripheral neuropathy. This shows our vibrant late-stage pipeline with uh, diabetic peripheral neuropathy being in our second phase three clinical trial here in the United States. We have a critical limb ischemia trial in China, and we've done, we've, uh, done an initial phase three trial in diabetic foot ulcer in the United States. We have additional studies underway in phase two in uh, peripheral artery disease or intermittent claudication. Uh, we are doing a our second phase two trial in amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS, here in the United States. And we have several other opportunities that we're looking at, both with our Ingensis product and with additional products that we are working on, some of which are currently in clinical trials, uh, such as a, a non-viral, non-plasmid product down at the bottom, uh, a potential COVID treatment that is based upon natural product uh, medicine. So what is VM202 uh, or Ingensis, our lead product? This is a product that is a uh, non-viral plasmid DNA product. It encodes two isoforms of human hepatocyte growth factor, HGF, which was named back in the 1980s because of its ability to cause an elaboration of liver cells in vitro. But beyond that, it's been found to be one of the most potent growth factors for neurotrophic activity, for angiogenic activity, and for myotrophic or muscle cell building activity, all of which we think will be important for the pain and the neuromuscular disorders that we're interested in. Uh, we use a proprietary backbone that enhances the absorption of the DNA product into muscle cells where it's injected. One of the nice things about this is that it's pretty much stays where we inject it. 
Uh, so for painful diabetic neuropathy, we administer 16 injections into each calf muscle, both sides, because it doesn't spread much more than a centimeter or so from the site where we inject it. Uh, and that also means that the plasma or serum concentrations of the plasma DNA are very small and it's very short-lived once it's in the serum. But in the muscle cells, animal studies show that it continues to manufacture the HGF product for at least two weeks after every injection. So in our initial series of, of, of clinical experiments, we did injections at day zero and then again at day 14 and no further treatment out to nine months or 12 months. Uh, and we had remarkable changes. I'll show you on one of the slides that's coming up uh, in the amount of pain that patients had with painful diabetic peripheral neuropathy. The product is packaged in freeze-dried vials, which is some, something that's easy to ship. Uh, it is uh, reconstituted in the pharmacy on site and then administered within a few hours to the patient. So it's very easy to handle as a DNA product. Uh, the lower slides show that we're injecting the calf muscle for patients with painful diabetic neuropathy or for amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. For ALS, we also inject the upper extremities and even the thumb, where we're trying to increase the mobility of the uh, use of these muscles and perhaps uh, increase quality of life for patients for a longer period of time. The reason that we believe that this works is because of the multiple therapeutic actions of HGF, human hepatocyte growth factor. We know, based upon animal studies, that where there are damaged neurons, that this will actually remyelinate fast-conducting neurons. It'll regrow the myelin sheath that makes the muscle cells, or the, the, the nerve cells, conduct uh, impulses on a very fast basis. It will regrow axons that are damaged as a result of disease process. Uh, it will create an increase in the microvasculature uh, that supports the health of neurons that are growing through that particular area. So that's an angiogenic activity. It controls or reduces certain inflammatory factors or pain-related factors that are released as a result of the disease process. So we've seen decreases in CSF1, in IL-6, and in related cytokines uh, that we think are promoting uh, pain in painful diabetic peripheral neuropathy. And we also control a number of other genes that may be involved in uh, atrophy. Uh, and so for this in particular, we think that this is going to be one of the benefits for our ALS subjects. If we focus on our most advanced program, painful diabetic peripheral neuropathy, we know that this is not a rare disease. This is a major and growing disease because of the prevalence of diabetes in the United States and worldwide. There are more than 30 million patients that have diabetes and of those, many go on to have diabetic peripheral neuropathy, and a substantial number of those go on to have painful diabetic peripheral neuropathy. The typical drugs that are used to treat this, in fact, the only FDA-approved drugs to treat this are shown on the right-hand side of the slide. These are all small molecule compounds, or in one case, the last one, the most recently approved product, is a high-strength capsaicin patch that's applied to the bottom of the feet where oftentimes the pain begins. This is not a garden variety pain. This is electrical shooting pain through your limbs or it's cramping, it's burning pain uh, that patients have. It is something that becomes disabling. And so many patients with advanced disease cannot continue to walk. It's too painful to walk, so they become wheelchair bound. The current medications all produce temporary relief. Small molecule compounds are gonna be limited by the half-life of the compound itself. The capsaicin patch is designed a little bit differently. It's actually designed to uh, burn off the nerve cells that are causing this aberrant activity, and it causes a, a, a destruction of the C-fiber nociceptors. Uh, until they grow back, patients may have some period of pain relief, but the capsaicin itself, the active ingredient in red hot chili peppers, is a rather painful experience for the patients that may require at least several days of opioid treatment uh, during the time that they receive that administration. So these are not therapies that are, are necessarily the most patient-friendly therapies. They're the only therapies available uh, as an alternative to using opioids, so that's an advance. But with our DNA product, we're seeing virtually no adverse side effects that are treatment-related, other than injection site reactions. And even that is no different than it would be for a flu vaccine. We use a 27-gauge needle, and the vast majority of the patients 
who have painful diabetic neuropathy lose some sensory function and they almost, in, in more than half the cases, they don't even feel the injections. We have done several clinical trials, so we're actually in our second phase three clinical trial at this point. The initial clinical trials used administration of the drug at only day zero and then again at day 14. Patients were followed for a year. There were substantial reductions of pain that lasted for that entire one year period of time. In our phase two clinical trial, we again just did two injections, one cycle of injections at day zero and day 14, and the effects lasted for the full nine months of that particular study. In our current phase three programs, we're doing two cycles of administration. Now, that by itself might seem surprising for those of you who are used to hearing about AAV therapies that might not be something that you'd want to inject a second time. Plasmid therapies, we can re-inject without any evidence to date of plasmid, uh, uh, pardon me, of, of uh, humoral immune responses. And we're also uh, not seeing any biological evidence of uh, any, any other sort of cytokine release or uh, uh, other types of immune responses. So in our current phase three program, we do injections at day zero, day 14, and again at day 90 and day 104. Uh, in our uh, first phase three trial, it was designed initially as a nine-month trial, but then we added on for the last 101 patients a three-month non-interventional extension to be able to get safety and efficacy out to a full 12 months. And in our second trial underway right now and our third trial that will be started next year, uh, these are designed as six-month trials with a six-month extension for a total of 12 months of efficacy and safety. These are the data from our extension study from our first phase three trial. Uh, patients come in with moderate to severe pain. On a zero to 10 scale, they have to have pain of four or greater in order to qualify for our study. But in general, we find that they come in with pain at a level of six to six and a half, meaning moderate to severe pain, and the range is anywhere between four and nine. So some of our patients actually come in with the most severe pain, and this can be pain every single day. So we actually measure what is your average daily pain, what's your worst pain, what's your least pain, and what's your pain right now, along with functional activity. What is seen here is the change in the average daily pain, which is the most accepted FDA criteria for a chronic pain drug. The patients dosed with the Ingensis product are shown on the red squares on the bottom. If I focus on the left side, that's all 101 patients who were in the extension study showing that the efficacy lasts for out to 12 months. And there are only two cycles of injection, day zero, day 14, again at day 90 and day 104. Uh, in the placebo-treated group, there were reductions of pain. They were less intense. And so that we had a significant reduction between the Ingensis-treated group and the placebo-treated group. We also did a pre-planned uh, evaluation of those patients who were not receiving gabapentinoids, pregabalin, gabapentin, uh, as concomitant therapy. We did allow other concomitant therapies. So we actually stratified for those who were taking uh, gabapentinoids and those who were not. And we saw that there was an even greater separation between placebo and active drug. Uh, between uh, those patients who were not taking the gabapentinoids. I've spent my entire career in the area of pain medicine. I've never seen changes in pain that are this robust in this patient population or that, that are this long-lasting in this patient population, which is why I'm really excited about the therapeutic potential for this treatment. So in terms of the significance, we've shown considerable safety for this product compared to other conventional products that are used to treat uh, painful diabetic neuropathy or, for that matter, used to treat uh, ALS uh, or some of the other diseases that we're looking at. Uh, we are seeing a larger separation between Ingensis treatment and placebo treatment than have been seen for any other drug in the painful diabetic neuropathy population. Uh, we've seen an enhancement of effects for those patients who are not taking gabapentinoids, and if you're interested in what our theory is for that, I can discuss that later on. Uh, and we have regenerative potential. Let's go into that uh, a little bit uh, more. In fact, this slide I've already covered. This uh, shows the 21 sites where we're doing studies right now in the United States. The RMAT designation, Regenerative Medicine Advanced Therapy, 
uh, is one of the breakthrough designations that the FDA can give. This is one of the rarest designations that they can give. And in fact, most of the designations of RMAT have been given for rare diseases. Through this time last year, we know of only two products that are used to treat major diseases that have received RMAT designation. Ours was the first. The second one is a product for Parkinson's disease. We have several opportunities for partnering. Uh, and if you'd like to discuss this, we have time available over the next few days, or we can get together by uh, email or chat or any other form that you'd like. Um, we are looking for partners not only for our painful diabetic neuropathy program and our ALS program, but also for diabetic foot ulcer for Charcot-Marie tooth disease. We did a pilot study in Korea that we're going to be reading out later on this year for peripheral artery disease and coronary artery disease. And then we have other therapeutic entities, such as this... Uh, agonistic antibody that we think will also hit the CMET receptor and potentially prov provide long-term therapeutic benefits. So that's the summary. Uh, this is an innovative company. It's a company that is focusing on plasma DNA technology primarily as opposed to AAV technology, and we're treating major diseases. And with that, thank you very much.